And good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is Mirko Pezzoli, and I'm a PhD student at the Politecnico di Milano under the supervision of uh, Professor uh, Sarti. And uh, today, in this presentation, I will show you some of uh, uh, the ongoing activities that we are uh, doing uh, with the Museo del Violino in Cremona. And in particular, uh, I will show you some results regarding the analysis of the directivity pattern of historical instruments. The key aspect of this work is to identify and define some quantitative measures that we can use for describing and comparing the directivity patterns of the instrument. So the directivity pattern, uh, as you know, uh, instruments present some uh, directional uh, characteristics that can be described by the directivity pattern. We can think of the directivity pattern as the map of the radiated acoustic energy in space. Due to these uh, directional characteristics, uh, violin shows some preferred directions of emission that uh, reveals how the instrument interacts uh, with the environment. So this property is known to varies also with the frequency. And uh, this is described in the literature as the uh, property of the violin uh, called the uh, directional uh, tone color that gives birth to differences in the timbre of the instruments according to the listening uh, position. So our goal is to define a set of descriptors of tools that uh, we can use uh, in order to characterize the directivity pattern and maybe to track the differences of directivity patterns between instruments or due to the aging or uh, modifications uh, of uh, the violin. So in our lab, a technique for the measurement of the directivity pattern was developed and uh, recently published on uh, IEEE transaction of audio speech and the language processing. The goal of this technique is to acquire the sound radiation in a setup uh, as close as possible to the actual listening uh, to the actual listening scenario. So we decided to uh, measure the directivity pattern while the violin is being uh, played. So um, this uh, methodology adopts some uh, techniques, uh, some pro signal processing uh, techniques that uh, have been developed in our lab. And in particular, we adopt uh, two plane acoustics uh, camera, which are um, which are basically uh, extended planar microphone arrays that acquire the uh, sound radiated by the instrument. Thanks to the advanced uh, processing of uh, this uh, technique, we can uh, perform the measurement in a semi-anechoic scenario. So this allows the violinist to play in a more pleasant uh, uh, environment with respect to an echoic uh, chamber. And um, we ask to the, to the player to constantly move in order to show, to expose the instrument uh, from various directions, from the directions of interest to uh, the plane acoustic cameras. Since the, uh, since the violinist can move, as you can imagine, we need to track the, the position and uh, and the so the location and the orientation of the instruments. And this is done using the uh, plane acoustic cameras as far as the location is concerned. And the, uh, and the a gyroscope mounted on the scene rest for the uh, tracking of the orientation. The, uh, the, uh, the radiated energy is then computing using a reference signal given by a proximity microphone mounted on the instrument on the instrument itself. So the results that I'm going to show you today 
regards to measurements of uh, 10 historical instruments. In this uh, data set, uh, we have five instruments by Stradivari, two instruments by Guarneri Dal Gesù and uh, Niccolò Amati, and uh, one instrument by Andrea Amati, which is also the oldest uh, of the group. As a benchmark, we uh, acquired the directivity pattern also of two twins, twin violins. So uh, these instruments uh, were built by a uh, Cremonese luthier, uh, Elena Bardella, uh, we, and they are specifically built in order to share the same geometry and, uh, and wood. For each, uh, for each instrument, we uh, analyzed, we uh, measured the directivity pattern. And in particular, with the, uh, during the analysis, during the plane acoustic analysis, we move from the time domain signals of the microphone to the frequency domain, uh, to the frequency domain representation. And we identified the fundamental frequencies and the harmonics of the four open strings that we asked to play uh, by the violinist. So the energy, uh, we obtained the energy map of the directivity pattern that we uh, encoded in a spherical harmonics uh, uh, expansion. So this allows, to, uh, this allows us to describe the directivity pattern uh, by means of few coefficients that are indeed the coefficient of the spherical harmonics expansion. We uh, are limited, uh, so uh, we limit our analysis on the upper hemisphere of the instruments. And at the end, we end up with this uh, map that you can see on the slides that describe the directivity pattern on the upper hemisphere of the instruments with the reference system is uh, given uh, in this uh, figure here. So uh, now we uh, want to introduce uh, a set of tools uh, that we can uh, adopt in order to analyze uh, and uh, characterize the directivity patterns uh, that we have uh, measured. The first uh, uh, tools that we introduce is the normalized cross correlation of uh, the spherical harmonics uh, coefficients. With this uh, metric, we can uh, uh, measure the overall similarity between uh, the directivity patterns. Indeed, uh, when uh, existent two sequences are not uh, are uncorrelated, the MCC will uh, uh, be close to zero. While with uh, when two uh, um, when two um, when two sequences uh, almost match, we will go through. Uh, we will we will obtain an NCC that goes uh, to one. So with these metrics, we can compare the directivity pattern of two uh, instruments. In this table, uh, you have the average value of the normalized cross correlation computed over. Uh, the whole uh, frequency uh, range that we analyzed. And the results are sorted uh, according to the year of construction of the instruments. So looking at this uh, table, we can identify some uh, interesting uh, results. First of all, uh, uh, you can notice that the highest correlation is associated to the twin values. So they present, they presents the more uh, the highest uh, similarity. Among the, uh, the historical instrument, instead, the highest similarity is given by the Vesuvius and the Joachim, both instruments by uh, Stradivari. The average value of similarity among the uh, data set of the, our historical instrument is around 0.65. And we can notice that the Carlo Nono violin by Andrea Amati records an NCC that is lower than the average value for almost for all the violins except the Hammerle violin, 
which is also the closest in time with the Carlo non. Another interesting behavior can be seen in the Cremonese. Indeed, you can notice that the Cremonese is uh, uh, returns on higher similarity with later instruments rather than uh, uh, the older one. And also with Stauffer, so with uh, one of the <coughs> instruments by uh, Guarneri, we, cannot, we can see a trend of the FCC that increases with the latest instruments with the exception of the other instrument by Guarneri, which is uh, in this case a Quarestani, the Quarestani violin. So we know that um, the directivity pattern presents some uh, preferred direction uh, of emission. So uh, in order to identify uh, those uh, uh, high energy emission regions, we define the principal radiation region by performing a segmentation of the directivity pattern using as a threshold minus uh, 3 dB. So this allows us to, ident to identify the principal, uh, so the highest uh, acoustic energy emission regions. And you can see for, uh, from this plot as instance that we can have different shapes and uh, positions uh, and also number of uh, principal radiation regions in uh, the directivity patterns. In order to indicate and then later process uh, the principal radiation region, we can define a binarized version of the directivity pattern, which basically will identify the location associated to the principal radiation region with a uh, value of one. And it's, uh, by the, this binary pattern is zero otherwise. This, the, this, uh, this map, this binary map, allows us to uh, perform a set of analyses exploiting uh, the processing of binary images. Moreover, we can define the center of mass of the principal radiation regions, since now we can identify uh, where the regions, uh, which points belongs uh, to the region. So this center of mass uh, somehow represents a point like a descriptor of the principal radiation uh, region, so that we can uh, track and use. So as expected, the twins violin shares most of their principal radiation regions. Indeed, we have found that they recorded the highest NCC. But here we can have a somehow better idea on how the shape of the directivity pattern is. We can easily visualize this agreement between the principal radiation regions simply by superimposing the uh, map, the binary map of uh, the uh, twin uh, violins. But we can do something more. So with the binarized pattern, we can uh, compute an histogram of the principal direction uh, regions. So this is simply achieved by summing the binarized pattern of different violins at uh, a, given, uh, a given frequency. If we, if we, when normalize the histogram, we obtain this sort of probability map. So in practice, this will give us the probability of having a high energy emission for a given direction. So computing this probability map, we can have immediately an idea on the, uh, prefer directions that are shared uh, among all the violins in our analysis uh, set. Obviously, I, I cannot uh, show all the, all the probability map, but uh, here I have uh, uh, sorted uh, the, some examples uh, of these probability maps according to, to the string. 
And uh, uh, yeah, in general, uh, we observe the well-known uh, uh, tendency of the path of the directivity pattern that moves from a more uh, omnidirectional isotropic uh, uh, radiation to uh, patterns with a uh, focused uh, directional uh, characteristics. Also, we can notice how these probability maps uh, have an higher variability uh, as the frequency uh, increases. Moreover, we notice that uh, there's a tendency in uh, shifting the, the principal radiation region to the upper part of the, um, of the hemisphere. So uh, that is uh, the 90 degree of elevation, so directions uh, perpendicular to the top plate. Another tendency is uh, given by the a focus uh, towards uh, this region, which uh, corresponds to minus 10, uh, zero degrees of azimuth, more or less, uh, that corresponds to the direction uh, towards uh, the audience. So with uh, the probability map, uh, we can have a general insight of the principal radiation regions in our data set. But uh, we would like also to uh, measure the similarity between uh, those principal uh, radiation regions. So we can use the binary, the binarized version of the principal radiation region to compute the uh, Jacquard similarity. The Jacquard similarity uh, is defined for two elements, A and B, as the ratio between their intersection and their union. So we have a Jacquard similarity that goes from zero for uh, regions that are disjoint and approaches one when the regions are completely, there's a, a full match between uh, the, the regions. So we can use this, uh, this Jacquard similarity as an index for uh, um, computing the, um, for analyzing how the shape of the, um, of the principal radiation regions varies. As instance, we can uh, compute the Jacquard similarity between uh, uh, the binary patterns at two successive frequencies, as you can see in this animation. So as you can notice uh, here, we have the Jacquard similarity values computed between the two frequencies uh, that are moving here. You will notice that up to 800 Hertz, the Jacquard similarity is uh, rather high. Then uh, it decreases uh, in the region, uh, in the frequency range between one kilohertz to 2.5 uh, uh, kilohertz which corresponds indeed to the, uh, more or less to the transitional mode uh, frequency. So we expect uh, the uh, patterns to vary and uh, so also the principal radiation regions. And at higher frequencies, uh, we have a higher variability that uh, is given uh, also when uh, the regions decreases in size and they tend to uh, be far uh, one from each other, one from the other. When I introduce, I introduce the binarized pattern, I also uh, explain how we can obtain uh, the center of mass of the, of the binary pattern, uh, sorry, of the principal radiation region. We can exploit this point-like description of the principal radiation region. And as instance, we can compute again an histogram. So we define a grid on the hemispherical region, for example, in this case, a 10 by 10 grid, and we can count the number of center of mass 
that falls within the blocks. This uh, allows us to understand uh, the location, the main location of the principal radiation uh, regions, and we can identify two main uh, groups, two, two main clusters. One is related uh, to the direction towards the, the audience, so uh, more or less at minus 15, uh, minus 20 degrees uh, of azimuth. And another region that tends to go more in the upper part of the, of the hemisphere, so more directed, uh, more perpendicular with the top plate. So the center of mass can also be used uh, in, in combination with the Jacquard similarity to uh, track how the principal radiation regions uh, varies uh, with the frequencies, for example. And as instance, we, we can keep track of the trajectory of the center of mass. So in this uh, animation, you see where the center of mass moves uh, at a different uh, frequency for a given uh, violin. Or um, another possible analysis could be to count the number of center of mass at different frequencies. And so we will identify, for example, when a uh, directivity pattern presents a um, more a, a dipole behavior or a, a monopole behavior. This so, is for a given violin. Yeah, this, okay. this animation is for a given violin, right. So uh, this, those are the centers of mass of the principal radiation regions that moves uh, according to the frequency. So different frequencies uh, will present uh, not only a different number of uh, center of mass because we can have more than one principal radiation regions, but they also move around. And we could uh, so keep track of this uh, information. So to conclude, um, we introduce a set of tools uh, that uh, we can use for uh, characterizing uh, and describing the directivity pattern of the violins. Uh, moreover, using the spherical harmonic coefficients and the NCC, we can uh, provide a measure of the similarity of the overall uh, patterns that we can indeed use for comparing the directivity pattern. While the GSI gives a measure of the changes in the shape of, of the directivity of the principal radiation regions, while the center of mass uh, can give us an idea of their location. So we uh, envision to use these uh, tools uh, in order to track uh, for example, the variation uh, in frequency or in time. So uh, we plan, if we plan to uh, repeat the measurements, we can see how the directivity pattern has been changed. And also we can use those, uh, take those tools for uh, characterizing the directivity pattern of historical violins and uh, maybe compare with uh, modern uh, instruments. So that's, that's all. Uh, uh, thanks for the attention. Thank you. Uh, we can have a, a short session of questions. Yeah, nothing in the chat. I uh, uh, don't see anyone raising hands. Checking. Can I ask a question? Yes. Claudia, Claudia Merrick, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a nice talk. Um, does it give you any information about the nature of the actual um, sort of uh, overall um, monopole, dipole, and quadrupole type moments in the radiation? 
is you're just looking at the maximum values by the sound of it. Now I can see shadows um, uh, 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 that, that suggest um, types of modes there, but do you, well, do you get any information at all? Um, can you talk about whether or not um, um, it's dominated um, at, um, in the intermediate frequencies, for example, by dipole type radiation rather than quadrupole or higher modes? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is an interesting uh, question. So um, we can, uh, uh, I mean, we can use uh, the, I think that one way to uh, try to identify this uh, uh, could be to um, track up these uh, uh, principal radiation regions. So, uh, when we identify maybe two or more uh, uh, re principal radiation regions, we can uh, uh, somehow uh, infer the uh, dipole-like uh, behavior, or even or even more. Also, um, it might be interesting to see. Uh, also the energy at the different uh, spherical harmonics uh, uh, coefficients. Uh, so those uh, somehow gives us an idea of uh, uh, which component of the spherical harmonics expansion will be more uh, involved in uh, defining the overall pattern, maybe. May, may I have a supplementary as well? That's fine. Um... Uh, you, you're quoting results for a particular frequency, but at, of course, when you get to higher frequencies, there's a lot of variation in directionality. So, uh, and in fact, you can go very quickly between a very high um, amplitude mode uh, in a particular direction to a very low one. Um, uh, so, do you make your measurements at a specific frequency, or do you average over frequencies a bit? Ah, so those measurements uh, were, um, uh, yeah. So we took the um, we took the frequencies at the um, where we can find enough energy of the harmonics. So actually, uh, for like for the um, for an easy analysis, I here I put uh, like 440 and, and blah blah blah, the mm -hmm. precise value of the of the harmonics. But actually, those uh, are um, are can be slightly off there's a slight offset on the actual frequency value. So uh, we use a peak finding uh, uh, algorithm to find where uh, there was a actually some energy to, to right. analyze. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. And, uh, and yeah, so the, the, I think the GSI can show how, how much the variation between uh, the principal direction regions uh, uh, mm -hmm. can be somehow uh, tracked. Uh, because we compare the shape of the of the direction of the of those regions. So if we have some high, we have the maximum energy at, in the higher part of the hemisphere, and then uh, for the next uh, frequency we have uh, a lower uh, lobe. This will uh, be found uh, in the in the, the existence here. We have one frequency that uh, goes uh, in this uh, around this region, and the next one was uh, up here. So they were uh, like changing, and this can be uh, somehow. Uh, this is reflected by this uh, Jacquard similarity index, or uh, by compute. We can we could compute the distance between uh, uh, the centers of mass, and this will give us. Uh, uh, an idea of uh, uh, somehow quant quantify the differences between the two 
the two patterns. So here it goes to zero indeed because we have two different, uh, they are not overlapping at all. Thank you. I hope this uh, clarified. I, I have a question, Mirko. Uh, yeah. uh, congratulations for your work. Uh, okay. I can see that you have a lot of experimental data and signal processing work also. Uh, in, in the graphs where you are comparing uh, historical violins to access uh, through correlations, Yes, this. Uh, the I-2015 violin and B violin is the same violin? So these A, B are the twins. So they are two violins uh, that have been uh, built in order to have uh, basically the same uh, geometry and uh, from uh, the same uh, woods. Uh, 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 John, John Fabel in, in the chat, has the same petition. Uh, I don't understand exactly what, what you are correlating between each violin. Is one frequency, is an average of your radiation? What is exactly your correlation? So this, uh, the table shows the normalized cross correlation that we uh, average over the all frequency domain. So we can compute this quantity using the coefficients of the spherical harmonics uh, discrete expansion of the pattern. And as you can imagine, we have one pattern for each frequency that we have analyzed. So here, in order to provide a summarized description of the similarity, I average the value of the MCC that we obtain comparing the different uh, frequencies. So we can compute this value for all the frequencies under analysis between the two uh, violins. And then we compute the average to get, this, uh, to get the, the, the table, basically. Otherwise, we would, uh, we would have a big uh, table with uh, the correlation uh, between all the violins at all the frequencies. And then, I mean, it's, Interesting, but uh, quite difficult to read uh, in a presentation. So. Okay, then then you are uh, uh, compacting. You, you you have a lot of information in only yeah. one one color, no? One, one axis of color. Mm -hmm. uh, then it implies that, for for example, uh, in the Cremones and Vesuvius. Uh, that these violins has the most similar radiation patterns in the whole history that you are plotting? Yes, it, it was clear? Yeah, the, um, the highest similarity of the historical ones is given by the Vesuvius and the Joachim. And also Cremonese and Joachim as uh, uh, I think the second the highest uh, similarity, which is around uh, 0 0.73 and 0 0.70 almost. While uh, the uh, twins violin are 0 0.85. So 85% uh, similar, so let's say. Okay. Then uh, my, my last question then, uh, Cremonese, um, um, Joachim, with only one year of difference, are were not twins like your A and B. No? Is something like this? Yeah, uh, they. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if they are have been uh, specifically built to be the same violin. So, uh, yeah, indeed, it's nice to see that they are. Uh, uh, indeed correlated, so uh, rather than uh, other different uh, values. So we can imagine that uh, there's a small uh, transition uh, in how they have been uh, built. And also we have to consider uh, the uh, 
history of each single value uh, of each single uh, violin. So they might have been uh, repaired uh, or uh, or whatever. So uh, those have been uh, built in the same APR. So uh, and they share the same uh, history more or less. So uh, we imagine to obtain uh, to give uh, almost the same uh, pattern. And indeed, that uh, this is reflected by the NC3. Yes, sorry, uh, one, one thing more, one more thing. Uh, why if A and B violins have a correlation of one, or, or at least I don't know, almost one, why these violins are not the same correlation with the other violins? Because indeed they have some some differences. Okay. I mean they are not uh, exactly the same, really, really the same. They have a small difference that can be can be found uh, can be found here. Sorry. 